Hello everyone. I hope this video finds you well. I hope you're in good health and that amidst all the chaos here, life has offered you some stability or at least some moments of calm and joy throughout it all. If you know me well enough, you know two things about me. That I'm tirelessly working to get my PhD in Middle Eastern history and that I didn't grow up with a strong faith background so my knowledge of scripture is spotty at best. So I thought I'd go off the beaten path for this video and talk about a quote from a book by Sinan Atun called The Corpse Washer. As you can probably guess by the title, it's not a particularly optimistic book. It's about a man, Jawad, who performs ritual corpse washings in Baghdad during the height of the United States' war in Iraq. And despite it being one of the most beautifully written things I've ever read, it's not where most would look for a series about hope. But as I've been thinking about how I wanted to structure my contribution to this series, I kept coming back to a passage from the last chapter, which describes a pomegranate tree in the yard outside the mortuary, which is primarily watered by the leftover water from the washings. The passage reads, I looked at its dark soil, wet with the washing water it had just drunk. It's a wondrous tree, I thought, drinking the water of death for decades now, but always budding, blossoming, and bearing fruit every spring. Is that why my father loved it so much? He used to tell me that the prophet Muhammad said that there is a seed from paradise in every pomegranate fruit. But paradise is always somewhere else, and hell, all of it, is here and grows bigger every day. Like me, this pomegranate's roots were in the depths of hell. Do the roots reveal everything to the branches, or do they keep what is painful to themselves? Its branches rise up, and when the wind toys with them, they look like they are fluttering and about to fly. But it's a tree. Its fate is to be a tree and to remain here. I keep saying that I don't believe in fate, so why am I saying this? I should say it's history, not its fate. History is what people call fate, and history is random and violent, storming and uprooting everything and everyone without ever turning back. A beautiful nightingale perched on one of the pomegranate's high branches. The nightingale turned its black head and gazed at me with its black eyes. Its head was adorned with a white triangular crown. It turned its head again, and I saw its cheek was the same white as its tail feathers. It started singing with a gentle sweetness as if it knew that I had complained that paradise was far away, so it had brought its sound right here. Not the most optimistic of passages, especially given that the book doesn't end with that last sentence, but I think it gives us an important insight into the world that we're in now. We're facing hell, some of us much worse than others, given the systemic, given the realities of systemic inequality. But the thing about a pandemic is that we all feel its effects in one way or another. And on top of this, racialized violence has become more visible in our communities, showing parts of the population that were shielded from this injustice just how ingrained systems of oppression are in the way we live. Again, with some, particularly black, brown, and indigenous communities, faring worse from this violence than others. And this is just in the United States. It's not even to mention the crises in Palestine, Yemen, Burma, the Philippines, Hong Kong. The list goes on, and it makes one feel almost helpless. But, like the pomegranate tree, although we're growing in this hell, we're also growing through it and breaking through the soil, reaching heights that many before us would not have thought possible, that many people in power do not want us to believe are possible. We're not just the roots steeped in an endless hell, um, but we are the whole tree, experiencing all the binding depths of the soil and the freedom of the wind. Every day I see broke college students scraping up spare cash to donate to relief funds, countless people starting petitions to bring justice to the wrongfully convicted and wrongfully murdered, activists working online and on the streets hoping to bring about a better, more ethical world. If you look closely, even though it feels like the world is falling apart, our communities are coming together to support each other, to help each other grow and succeed, and maybe, hopefully, break out of this hellscape of a system. And of course, we have moments in our lives where we can experience joy and calm that makes us forget, just for a second, about how hopeless everything feels. It's like the Nightingale song in The Corpse Washer, God's little gift to remind us that all is not lost. After the birds start singing, Jawad has to go back to work washing corpses, but that doesn't make the moment pointless. It's a little bit of beauty and peace to hold on to when things seem their most bleak. We too, eventually have to be pulled out of our moments of serenity and peace to continue the fight for justice and to remind each other to keep each other safe during COVID. But we should appreciate these moments for all they're worth, for this hope in small doses. My prayer for all of you is that you get enough of these moments to keep you sane 
and that they keep you recharged and restore your energy so that you're able to continue growing and helping others to grow as well. I love and miss all of you St. Peter's folks and I hope we can see each other in person soon.